Hello, we are back to do the book club, Be Holy for I Am Holy book club, and we are reading The Complete Visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich, and we've been reading about Anne, which is Mary's mother, Mary, and her birth, and her name, and today we're going to read Preparations for Mary's Presentation. Mary was three years and three months old when she made the vow to join the Virgin in the temple. She was very delicately built and had golden hair inclined to curl at the end. She was already as, as a child of five or six here in our country. Mary oh. Healy's daughter was a few years older than Mary and stronger and stouter. I saw in Anne's house the preparations for Mary's admittance into the temple. It was made the occasion of a great feast. Five priests had assembled from Nazareth, the forest and others and other places among them, Zechariah, and a son of the brother of Anne's father. They were about to perform a sacred ceremony over the child, Mary, a kind of examination as to whether she was sufficiently mature in mind to be admitted to the temple. Besides the priests, there were present a sister from Sephoris with her daughter, Mary Healy, and her child and several other little girls and relatives. The robes worn by the child at this feast were cut out by the priests themselves and the different parts quickly sewed together by the women present. The child was clothed in them at certain periods when subjected to serious, to series of interrogatories, interrogatories. The ceremony was in itself very grave and solemn, although the faces of the aged priests were at times lit up by smiles of admiration at the expressions and answers of little Mary. And it was frequently interrupted by the tears of Joachim and Anne. Three entire suits were prepared for Mary and put on her at different times during the ceremony, the questioning and answering going on in the meantime. All this took place in a large room next to the dining hall. Light entered through a square opening in the center of the roof, which opening was often covered by a net. The floor was covered with a red carpet, in the middle of the room stood a table intended for an altar with a red cover and over that a white transparent one. Upon it lay a case with rolls of writings and a curtain upon which the picture of Moses was either embroidered or laid on and sewed down. He was represented in the large mantle in which he used to pray. The tables of the law hanging on his arm. I have always seen Moses represented as a tall, broad shouldered man. He had a high, somewhat pyramidal head, a large hooked nose, and upon his broad, high forehead were two bumps inclining toward each other and mm -hmm. giving him a very remarkable appearance. In his childhood, they were like little warts. His complexion was brown, bright and ruddy. His hair inclined to red. I saw many such protuberances as those, possesses, as those possessed by Moses on the forehead of the ancient prophets and hermits. Sometimes only one such a crescent appearance upon the middle of the forehead. Hmm. On the altar, 
lay the three outfits for the child Mary, along with various materials, etc., presented by the relatives for her dowry. A kind of throne stood upon steps before the altar. The priests entered the hall with naked feet. Three of them only proceeded to the examination and blessed the child who was at yet in her usual clothing. Joachim and Anne were present with their relatives. The women stood back, the little girls at Mary's side. One of the priests took the garments from the altar, explained their signification, and handed them to Anne's sister from Sapphoris, who put them on the child. First came a little yellow knitted robe, and then a colored laced bodice, which was put on over the head and fastened around the body. It had on the breast something like cords. Over that came a brownish mantle with armholes, from the upper part of which hung lappets. It was cut out around the neck and closed under the breast. On her feet were brown sandals with thick green soles. Her reddish yellow curls were arranged and a silken crown with feathers in it placed upon them. The feathers were a finger in length and they bent over toward the inside of the crown. I know to what bird in the country they belong. A large square ash colored kerchief was thrown over her head like a large veil. It could be drawn together under the arms in such a way that they might rest in it as in sleep. It appeared to be a mantle used in time of prayer and penance, also in traveling. Ken? The priest, the priest, the priest put... put. I don't know why this is making a loud echo. Um, the priest now put to the child all sorts of questions relative to the discipline enforced in the temple. Among other things, they said to her, thy parents, having promised thee to the temple, have made a vow that thou shouldst drink no wine nor vinegar, shouldst eat no grapes nor figs, now what wilt thou add to this veil? Think upon this during thy meal. The Jewish people, and especially the young maidens, were accustomed to drink vinegar. Mary, too, was fond of it. On these and similar things was she interrogated. And now the second suit was put upon the child. It consisted of a sky blue body, a mantle of the same color, but of a lighter shade, a richer bodice and white veil, glossy like silk, which fell behind in folds, something like the consecrated veil of a nun. Over this was a fine closely fitting wreath of colored flower buds made of silk intermixed with small green leaves. Then the priest threw over her face a white veil gathered on top like a cap. It was caught by three clasps, one below the other, by means of which the veil could be raised upon the head, either one third or one half or even the whole. The child was instructed upon the use of this veil when to be raised or lowered in eating or answering questions. In this array, Mary went to the table where she sat between two of the priests, the third opposite to her. The women and the children sat on one end of the table apart from the men. During the meal, the priests practiced the child in many points upon the use of the veil, asking questions and receiving her answers, and also in many other of the custom customary ceremonies. They reminded her that she could still partake of everything, and they offered her different dishes, tempting her in order to see how far her abstinence would go. But Mary excited their admiration by all that she did and said. She tasted sparingly of only a few dishes, 
and answered all their questions with simplicity and wisdom. During the meal and the whole of the examination, I saw angels, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> hovering around her, directing and assisting her in all things. After the repast, she was clothed anew before the altar in the next room. Annie's sister from Sephoris assisted the priest in the ceremony, during which the latter explained the signification of the garments and spoke of spiritual things. The robes now put on the child were the most beautiful of all, a violet blue bodice and over it a breast piece embroidered in colors. The latter was now fastened to the piece that covered the back, caught to the plaited skirt and fell below in a point. Over this fell a violet blue mantle, full and magnificent, rounded in the back very much like a chasuble. When it was closed on the breast, it formed puffs on the arms like arches wherein they could rest and yet be exposed to view. It had five rows of golden of gold embroidery down the front, the middle one furnished with buttons or hooks that fastened the mantle. It was also embroidered around the edge. A large changeable colored veil was then put on, which glanced from white to violet blue. Upon this veil rested a crown closed on top by five clasps. It was a thin, broad circlet lined with gold, the upper edge spreading into points tipped with little balls. A network of silk covered the outside, which was ornamented with small roses of the same material in whose center were fastened five pearls. The five points also were of silk and surmounted by a ball. The breast piece was fastened behind, yet had cords also in front as if for lacing. Her mantle was caught first over the breast by a crossband, which was prevented from rest pressing upon the breast ornament by a button with a long shank. It closed again under the bodice and fell behind the arms in folds. In this festive attire, Mary was placed upon the steps before the altar, the little girls at her side. She now repeated her resolve to ab abstain from flesh, fish, and milk, to make use of only a certain drink prepared from the pith of a reed soaked in water. This was much used by the poor of Palestine, such as here in our own country, rice or barley water is drunk from by them. To this beverage, Mary proposed to add occasionally some carabinethine juice. This juice is like a white viscid oil and is very refreshing, though not in the same degree as balsam. Mary expressed her resolution to refrain also from spices and fruits, with the exception of a kind of yellow berry that grows in bunches. I know them well. Children and poor people eat them in that country. She said also that she would lie on the bare ground and nightly rise three times to pray. The other maidens rose but once. Upon hearing this, Anne and Joachim shed tears, and the aged Joachim pressed his child in his arms, saying, Ah, my child, that is too hard. If thou livest so mortified a life, I, thy poor old father, shall never see thee again. This scene was very affecting. But the priest replied to the child that she should like the others, rise only once during the night, and they laid down other and milder conditions for her. Finally, they said, many of the other virgins entered the temple without a dowry or even wherewith to pay their board. On this account, and with their parents' consent, they engaged to wash the blood besprinkled garments of the priests and the rough woolen cloths. What? 
This is a very heavy work and not accomplished without bleeding hands. But thou wilt never be called upon to do such services since the parents are able to maintain thee at the temple. But Mary quickly replied that she was ready even for this work where she esteemed worthy to perform it. At this speech, Joachim again betrayed his emotions. During these holy ceremonies, I beheld Mary becoming at times so tall that she even rose above the heads of the priests. This was for me a sign of her wisdom and grace. The priests were filled with amazement, at once solemn and joyful. At least Mary was blessed by the priests. I saw her radiant with light as she stood on the little altar throne, two priests on either side of her and one opposite. They held rolls of writing and prayed over the child, their hands outstretched above her. At the moment, I saw a wonderful vision in the child Mary. She seemed by virtue of the blessing to become transparent. In her was a glory, a halo of unspeakable splendor. And in that halo appeared the mystery of the Ark of the Covenant, as if in a glittering crystal vessel. I saw Mary's Excuse me. I saw Mary's heart open like the doors of a temple and the holy thing of the Ark of the Covenant around which a tabernacle of precious stones of multiplied, of multiplied, hold on, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, sometimes the wording is not very good. Yeah, a tabernacle of precious stones of multiplied signification okay sorry it was me um had been formed like a heavenly throne going into her heart through that opening like the ark of the covenant into the holy of holies like the ostensorium into the tabernacle i saw that by this the child mary was glorified he hovered above the earth with the entrance of this sacrament into Mary's heart, which immediately closed over it, the vision faded, and I saw the child all penetrated by glowing fervor. During this wonderful vision, I saw that Zachary received an interior assurance, a heavenly monition, that Mary was the chosen vessel of the mystery. From it, he had received a ray that had appeared figuratively in Mary. And now the priest led the child to her parents. Anne caught her child to her breast and kissed her. But Joachim, Joachim, deeply affected, reverenced Mary and only took her hand. The elder sister, Mary Healy, embraced the favored child with much more gaiety than did Anne, who was a very serious, practical, moderate, and self-possessed woman. The little niece, Mary Cleopas, acted as any child would and fondly embraced the little Mary. Then the priest took the child again, disrobed her, and led her forth in her customary dress. I saw them standing, drinking out of a cup, and then departing. Wow, that was like interesting to say the least um some of the stuff sounded like she was only three years and yeah. three months and she can talk and everything and 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 I relate and I'm wow. having a hard time looking at this one because even the smartest three-year-old I can't see like even Having that well, you know, they were they were raised differently, and they were raised very strictly. And I mean, you know, they were raised like they would get up what two, three times in, at night to pray in the middle of the night. Yeah, that's yeah. that's wow. But you know, these people were very extremely devout. I mean, that's what they did. They just prayed, prayed, prayed. So I, I know it's hard for us to display to think, but. Um, it could be, it could be, 
I mean, I guess there are those really intelligent children and God definitely prepared her different than yeah. other. Now, some of these clothing, I couldn't even make heads or tails of what they were saying, to be quite honest. Yeah. But, but um, you know, this is going to be one of those readings, one of these visions that she had, that's going to be a little bit um, more unusual than the others. But this I is did, one that's going to be a little bit. I did like. I could. I could understand though the did you very like even before she was born, she was prepared for her role. Yeah, it's saying um, my internet connection is unstable. I, I don't I hope I didn't lose what you said there. No, I don't think so. Okay. But um well anyway, anyway I, I'm not finished. I wanted to just say a little bit. Um Oh, okay. I, I thought like, it was over. No. Um, you know, I'm never over that quick. Get a, get a grit girl. <laughs> oh no, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking no, no, about no, the actual no, reading. Yeah, no, no, the reading's over, but I just want to say the the clothing was difficult to make heads or tails of, but you know, whatever I hear here embroidered and sewed down, I, you know, I'm like you, I love, um, fabrics and things like that. So I, I find it interesting. I couldn't quite make heads or tails of, of the, the way that they were explaining it. I mean, I could see uh, that first came a little yellow knitted robe and then a laced bodice over it. I mean, I could picture that, but she's three, don't forget. And then it had on the breast something like cords. Like I couldn't quite picture that. And the brown to, brownish mantle, like like I noticed... Because remember, they're, they're in the Middle East. There's a lot of sand and wind and things like that. So they have a lot of layers that they wear. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I'm just kind of imagining that, trying to figure out what they're saying here. But um, it was not easy. Um, but I could just see one after another of these layers that they were talking about. Uh, and then I had to laugh when they were talking about the 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 Moses hook nose. I'm like, yeah, what Jew has a hook nose? <laughs> yeah, that and the two marks that that he had up here, yeah. which which she said that a lot of the prophets carried that mark. A yeah. lot of the prophets and a lot of the um, prophets and I don't know who else she said carried that mark. Yeah. There, so yeah. I'm thinking. Maybe that was a marking that, you know, they carry. Yeah. You know, yeah. For their yeah. prophesizing for their, you know, you just never know, you know, yeah. they were. And then um, when we got here to, she should drink no wine or vinegar. What three-year-old do you know drink a wine? But, um, well, you know, again, again, you know, they were brought up. Yeah. With and certain customs. Said, and, stuff. and then it said she should eat no grapes or figs. And wilt thou add this to the vow? And then, you know, sh and then it says that they they were accustomed to drink vinegar. Well, you know, my daughter and I like um, salt and vinegar chips dipped in vinegar. I mean, salt and vinegar um, chips, yeah, dipped in vinegar or just plain chips dipped in vinegar. And um, well, you know, vinegar, vinegar is actually good for you. I know. Vinegar, yeah, you know, they do the apple cider, cider vinegar yeah. cleanses. I've done those. And, you yeah. know, you add with a little bit of, like, vinegar, a little bit of lemon, yeah. and I think a little bit of cayenne pepper, and then you drink it, and it's supposed yeah, to help you. It's supposed to I help. can't drink the cayenne pepper with my gastritis issue, you know. But um, even when I could, I couldn't take it. But anyway, um, yeah, I just thought this part was really interesting and, you know, John the Baptist was told never to have alcohol. And, you know, she's related by, she's related to John the Baptist, their cousins, you know, or that's her nephew. So, you know, or wait, it's her, no, let's see, if Elizabeth was her cousin, then he would be her second cousin. But either way, they share DNA, you know, and families share DNA when it comes to alcoholism. So I'm just wondering if in their DNA, there was alcoholism and that's why God told them don't drink this because of course God would know these things. So I thought that was interesting. And then when we got to, when they're talking about um, the mantle and the dark, the, the sky blue and the rich and the purple and this, 
from what I've heard in the past is um, that because the ink was so expensive, the dye was so expensive that a lot of people could not afford it. And they were, and then they're saying that her family could afford, she didn't have to do the work that her family could afford to pay her boarding. I don't know how you let go of a, your three-year-old and put them in this, you know, oh, I couldn't imagine. Those were different times. I mean, these no. people were a special tribe. They were called from the tribe of where Anne came from. They were called, what, what were they called? Um, Asinian. I don't know. They have Aeneas. Asinian. Asinian. The Asinian. Yeah. were and we read about how and they were brought today, up our kids today are very spoiled but i just like thinking of yeah. this i'm just like oh i could not let my baby go you know to me my kids are still babies so they're like seven um <laughs> but uh i didn't even i never let my kids alone you know until i didn't either but those were so, different times and though, and you know they were guided by god big time yeah. i mean they, they I, were just like I, so I devout started, my son was 10 years old by the, when I left, you know, but when I left um, them, I would leave my 10 year old with my 14 year old because he's four years older than him. Um, but it, I was nervous, like I'd run to the store and I'd come right back and I was scared, you know. Um, but when I had to work, sometimes he had to, you know, and I even called when I first came to Florida and asked them, is it legal? Because I was accustomed to having my mother but you know my son was 14 and i babysat at 14 but i mean just hearing all this like i just whoa so then when they were talking about um they consecrated the veil like a consecrated veil of the nun like so that means she was wearing you know this this veil this little baby is wearing this little tiny nurse um uh nun's veil you know and um and they said the veil, the white veil gathered at the top like a cat. So like imagining this little tiny little uh, three-year-old, you know. So, I mean, my daughter was a really tiny, skinny little three-year-old. She didn't eat much. No matter how much I tried to get her to eat, she was a very picky eater. Now, my boys, they ate everything in sight. But her, ah, oh, she was difficult. Um except when she went to her friend's house she'd come home and say oh i like this i'm like yeah but you wouldn't try it for me but um she'd go to their to her friend's houses and, and eat things so anyway i just thought this was interesting and and then at the table she sits between two priests you know this three-year-old like i can't like like imagining this it was just like a little hard to like imagine and then she saw angels hovering around her and assisting her in all things. That was kind of exciting to hear that. Um, yeah. And then Anne's sister. Anne's sister has a daughter almost the same age as as um, Mary. So I thought that was interesting. Anne's sister from Sephora assisted the priest in the ceremony, explaining the signification of the garments. You know, just like the food was so different back then, the garments were so different. And I just wish that we, you know, that they had pictures or, you know, I just, wouldn't that be so interesting? Yeah. You know, and here it talks about the violet blue bodice. When we heard, I've heard in the past, they couldn't afford this violet blue. But see, they were also from another country, you know, I mean, they're from Jerusalem. That's totally different way of dressing, even to today. Mm -hmm. even today so in those times you could just imagine you know it was just very 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 different so. and here she's wearing her violet blue mantle from the time she was a three-year-old you know we see her. <laughs> god bless you excuse we, me we see her in a blue um you know kind of a mantle type thing that she wears and that's what she wore at three years old according to um yeah you know i just i thought that was interesting and then the gold embroidery well you know me with gold i love gold especially gold embroidery and oh, then yeah. yeah and then um just hearing trying to imagine this clothing was was you know little small roses and fastened little pearls and lacing i just love all that and i you know i just i wonder what their um embroidery was like could you imagine remember everything our, was made by hand oh of course they didn't have machines back then but you know um 
who was it we saw just recently? Oh, um, the doctor from our class, she was wearing like a prayer shawl and they- Oh and, yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, and they embroider things and stuff like that. Alexandra. Yeah, Alexandra, yeah. And uh, so it just was interesting. And then when they're testing her about food, a three-year-old for flesh, you know, for meat and- Yeah, meaning that she was a vegetarian and was this only for a little bit of time or for her whole life? Yeah, I don't know, but I just thought that was interesting. I don't know. You know? And then what is this juice, this terabinathine juice? You I know? don't know. I'm like... I would totally drink it. Yeah, what kind of <laughs> juice is that? I would totally drink it as long as it's not wine or as long as it's like something to do with veg vegetables and healthy, I would totally drink it. Oh, my daughter-in-law, I, I sent them Natalie's clean juice because they used to live in Waterford. My son used to have a house in there and he, he made a lot of money on that house. Anyway, um, it's called clean juice. And I sent them a picture of her, her picture that was on her wall. And my daughter-in-law says, looks yummy. <laughs> She goes, I don't know if they've ever been there. I was, I, she didn't say if they've ever been there, but they used to live right near there. Now they're about 30 minutes from it, but they could sometimes go over there. So, but anyway, um, so yeah, it was very interesting, was interesting to say the least. Yeah. And, and then to see how Joachim was very affected. He was very emotional about her leaving and, um, I thought that was interesting. I didn't get this. You know, they said many enter without a dowry with wherewith to pay their board. But these parents, they they could afford, they were paying. But here, you know, they had some money. I mean, she she had money. Apparently. And it says they engaged to wash the blood be sprinkled garments and i'm just imagining it must be because they did a lot of you know they would uh sacrifice the animals so that is because at first i'm like they're washing the priest's blood sprinkled garments what and i'm like duh they do sacrifice on the altar could so, you imagine under the altar had plastic over the colors yeah because, you know, I could just imagine that that would be very extremely messy. Well, they you didn't know, remember that. Then. Remember that in our Tuesday class, they talked about in the altar. They had a drain. They would have a special drain for the blood. And then water. Yeah. Yeah. So. But. To get rid of it. But still, they didn't have plastic back then, Jeanette, just so you know. Well, why did they say plastic there? It said a plastic over the white. Didn't it say that? I Am I mistaken? I, 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 I heard it. I didn't say plastic. Yeah, it said plastic. Well, I'll have to look it up now. Because I can't. Yeah, Jeanette, the plastic wasn't. Yeah, I know. They were discussing the altar. Plastic's new. I um, know that. I don't know why I, I heard it, though. I don't know, but um, they a probably clear, a clear natural. something. Maybe it was a clear cloth. Or yeah, something. they probably have some kind of natural thing that they use. But anyway, I don't the, know. But I yeah, you're right. That, was, that really <laughs> you're blew right. me away when it said blood, and I'm like, oh, that's right. They sacrifice, and that just, just animal sacrifice. It, that upsets me so much because. Because you know how I am about animals. It just I don't do well in hearing about them suffering. So I it bothers me when they talk about that. But um so then um Mary be becoming at all times so tall. I don't imagine her tall because my daughter's real tiny. And you know, they said the tallest she would get would be like five two. And um her grandma, both of her grandmas, well. Yeah, my mom is small and her dad's mom is small. So, but um, Jewish women, I don't imagine as tall, you know? So the fact that they're saying Mary at three years old was so tall, I don't know. I just have been having a hard time with this. Uh, she was even rose above the heads of the priests. I don't know. That doesn't even make sense to me that that could be possible. Well, no, I think it was maybe she was like, because of her... Because of her, I don't know, her, 
her the Holy Spirit being around her or whatever. Maybe she raised a little. I don't know. Maybe. We don't know. It could be supernaturally that she looked higher because of her. You know, the supernatural realm around us is so very, very powerful that we we can't see it, but it's there. Yeah. And you know, it's it's good supernatural and bad supernatural. It's 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 all it's all heavenly stuff yeah. and also yeah. stuff from other places. So it's like a mixture. So of course it was all heavenly in there, but it must have been some kind of like, you know, illuminating beauty or whatever. I don't know. I just, I can, totally, I can totally picture it because I'm very like, my mind does go way out there. Yeah, I know. It really does a lot. So I can yeah. totally picture it. You're an artist at heart. I can um, totally picture it. I, I am too, but you're a little bit further than me. Uh, but but here, I'm trying to unhighlight it, but it won't let me. But it says that this for me was a sign of her wisdom and grace. Well, we know, you know, when they talk about like ballet dancers with their long necks like doves, you know, so you see that as grace. And she was blonde with curly hair. And that's another thing. Jews aren't generally blonde. I mean, there are some blonde Jews. Oh, yeah, there's going to be but, some. But generally, they're darker haired. Um, but I, I just, I, I just, um, the tall, the blonde, like, you know, and, and she sees it as wisdom. Well, back then, the Jews were very short. So, um, you know, I guess she's, you know, a lot of people, tall people, are looked at more as leaders, just for some reason, human beings see taller people, bigger hands, you know, as able to work better with tools and able to lead better, you know? So I'm guessing that's why, you know, that's the only thing I can think of. So, um, so then I just, and then they put her on a little altar throne like they, I saw her radiant with light as she stood on a little altar throne. So here they're putting her on a little altar throne. And then they held the rolls of writing and, you know, and then the reading. Like, I can't imagine. A thing and then and then she was raised to be jumping up and down and acting crazy. <laughs> like, I can't. She even... was raised. You know, she was born with this, like. With this special personality this special this special obedience mm -hmm. i mean she was born that way you know god when he wants you to know something to act the way you will be acting that way look at what he did with look at what he did with moses there and the that. people that were around moses he wanted all these intricate gold sculptures made and and all these beautiful things that he had made for the covenant but yet these people they didn't know anything to do with craftsmanship. These people were slaves all these years. These people didn't have that knowledge. Oh, no, but it no. says it in the Bible that God gave no, them they the knowledge. They were very crafty. They were. But, but it says it in the Bible. I can find it if you want me to. Um, yeah, they were very though. crafty, though. They were but he gave, it says there that he gave, okay, I got gave you. the people the you. knowledge and the talent. Right. God gave them the yeah, talent to do exactly what he was asking. I because remember, God was asking, he was asking certain little dimensions. If you read it, what is it, Deuteronomy? The and then, yeah. The Ark of the Covenant, he gave them extremely specific. It was unbelievable. I do remember reading that. But I thought, I thought that um, here they talk about, she seemed by virtue of the blessing to become transparent. It was a glory, a halo of unspeakable splendor. I could see that. And in the halo appeared the mystery of the Ark of the Covenant. Now that, I wonder, as if in a glittering crystal vessel. So I, I don't quite picture that. I don't know, you know, like what, a, a vase or some, of some sort, a vessel, glittering crystal. So I, I'm guessing... Remember, she was talking about the holy thing. Yeah. So from the start of the book, and I could just picture something glowing, like the holy thing. Yeah, and I'm just wondering what a crystal vessel looks like, you know? 
I don't know. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Evidently beautiful, but I'm not like, I can't get a picture of it. So then she says, Mary's heart opened like the doors of a temple. And I think that's so interesting since she is the bride, um, you know, yes, bride of the church and the holy thing in the Ark of the Covenant around the tabernacle with precious stones uh, that uh, uh, that formed like a heavenly throne. Like, you know, and this child Mary was glorified. She hovered above the earth like. I, I, you know, I don't know, you know, this, this reading is a little bit like a little hard to wrap my brain around, but um, I can see it. You can't, but I can see it. Yeah. With so. the entrance of this sacrament into Mary's heart, you know, they're talking about a sacrament here with the entrance of this sacrament into Mary's heart, which immediately closed over it. The vision faded and I saw the child all penetrated by a glowing fervor. When you think about it, when the priest does our blessing, when you did your blessing with your kids, you do, you do get a sense. And, and when you take the communion and, you know, I, I have Christ's flesh within me and I want it to come into my flesh and help me be holy, you know, help my flesh um take his flesh and become like him like yes you know so when they say this like i can imagine i can kind of imagine that like a blessing because a blessing like, you can feel something you feel something yeah there, you, you, yeah there's like a light you feel it yeah that that when you I, give a blessing or when you get a blessing or you get the communion yeah. you feel it you feel the present yeah it's like a golden light i can see this you know what i mean that part i can see um so well, that, imagine that twenty fifty thousand. yeah and mary was the chosen <laughs> mary was the chosen vessel of the mystery she's a vessel she holds within her womb she a vessel for she's the a walking God. covenant she, yeah she's a little tiny vessel for god to come through like that I can see, but like this, the vessel, they're talking about this clear crystal vessel. I don't, you know, I don't know. Is she inside of it? Is she, you know, I don't get that part, but um, I just thought it was great. And then Anne kissed her child and Joachim, he, he, he reverenced Mary. After yeah, she Anne was a little more on the serious than the dad. Normally it's the other way around. Thing. Yeah, normally it's you know the mother that's all, but I guess I guess Anne already knew. Mm -hmm. She knew what was going to happen. She knew what the role was. She so she was ready already in there. But the dad, you know, it's a little girl. It's it's like a different. Well, I guess. He, it says he was deeply affected, so he was the more emotional one. Yeah, I think so. Have you ever notice some couples, one will be more emotional than the other. In the other, know? yeah. And like, like your husband is not as emotional as you are in your relationship, at least what I've noticed. And um, and yeah, he's very laid back. Yeah, he's very laid back. He's like, and, okay, whatever. Oh, your mom, just leave her alone. She'll, you know, it'll be son, over soon. And I'm there crying. Oh, and yeah. he's like, "Oh, it's okay. She'll be fine. Just give her five more minutes." And then I'm oh, okay. So Want to eat knows. something? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now my son is the more I believe is the more emotional one. My younger son than his wife Rachel because um, Rachel's very you know she was the manager for ten years of her shop. Now she has her own shop. But she was great crypt's manager for like 10 years. And, you know, she's the boss. She's very even keeled. Where my son, my younger son, he's a cancer. He's, you know, I know and we're not supposed to look at um, uh, um, astrology, but I only look at the personalities. And he's very even, you know, he's very emotional. Um, but he is not that emotional where he can't control himself or anything like that, but he's much more deeply affected where my daughter-in-law, like when he's acting ridiculous, she'll just look at him and she's like, you're just acting ridiculous. And I just can't stop laughing when she, <laughs> because I just, it just cracks me up 
when he's acting ridiculous, when he's saying, well, I don't think they should this or that. And she says, you're just being ridiculous. And it just makes me laugh so hard. So you notice that in couples. So I'm seeing here, Joachim is, is um, one of those, like I can imagine it was a cancer, like my son, like, I'm not saying men don't cry over their dog or anything like that, but my son cried for weeks from his dog and I loved his dog. I mean, but that thing was attached to his hip. That's kind of like Joachim seems like I imagine him like that. He's deeply affected, but because of this, this blessing she got, it was sacred. You know, they, they were very pious people. So when, she, when Mary got this blessing from this priest and he's, and this is glowing, you know, Joachim is almost scared. Like you're, you're like, it, it, it's like when Joseph said, no, I can't marry her because I'm not good enough. You know, and, and I've heard too many priests say he was not getting rid of her because he thought she got pregnant, whatever he knew. And he didn't think himself worthy. So I see Joachim here. He would not hug her like Anne hugged her. He only took her hand. It was like, she, and it says here, reverence, Mary. He he recognized that blessing was almost like a, like, you know how we have our baptism and communion and, you know, anointing. It's like she was anointed and she was so sacred that he only could take her hand. Like he felt intimidated, you know, just it must've been so hard to give her to Joseph. I can't wait to, to maybe read that part. I, I, if read, she has I it. went ahead a little bit. I went, Oh, ahead. you did. No, I didn't read. I just went and it said to Joseph and I'm like, Oh, I can't. oh okay. I can't wait to get there because that means that maybe, maybe they got some, I think that Anne and, and Joaka must've gotten some kind of a sign a message from an angel or from God or something to say, this is the one she yeah. needs to be with. Yeah. Um, yeah. It has to be because why would you want your beloved child that's been trained all these years to be so holy, to go with a person that, you know, you don't really, I don't know. I think that it would have to have come. No, they knew um, each other. They, they knew each other and all that. Oh, I know, but I'd like to they know a little more the about same that. Family. They were from I the just, same family. I just love it that we're able to see the parents of Mary and to see where the, where they came from. I just like that. Okay. And now I feel I feel more familiar with Mary now. You know? I do too. Like, I, like when I, we go to heaven and we see Joachim and we see Anne, we'll say, Oh yeah, you know I I read about your family. <laughs> I read about where you came from. We'll sit when we have our feasts with everyone and say, "Well, Saint Michael and Saint Joseph are all fighting <laughs> evil." We'll be there at the table, say, "Listen, tell us what were the outfits like? Do you have any pictures? Like what was that fasting thing pictures? you gave Mary when she was three and a and three months old? That you, I mean, three years and three months that you." Was that really a fast? Did that last all her life? Or was she eating meat after a while? Yeah. Oh, no, we need to know these things. They're like, we need to know. But look, I don't want to go. I want to come back to this, please. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like we're going over it. Yeah, I'm sorry. He had this huge blessing. This this was extremely sacred. And and the way that they're saying it, how Joachim deeply affected, he, he just, he felt she was so sacred. He didn't like, like the way Anne took her in her arm, she was more practical. Like he seemed more like, you know, and then when they say Mary Healy embraced her, the favored child with more gaiety than did Anne, she was enthusiastic. And Anne was just more like, this is the way it goes. She was one of those mothers. And then when they get here to the little niece, I thought it was so cute how she acted as any child would. She didn't see any, you know, she couldn't, she didn't know she was now reverent. You know what I mean? That she was now sacred. But see, I was like that. I was like Mary. When my kids, my kids, all four of them were at the 530 mass at Annunciation for years together, all four servers together. And when Junior, for some reason, Junior was always getting sick up there. He would like start going, and then I, 
or else one of them start laughing or something. And I'd be like, go looking at them, giving them the evil eye. Like, don't you even think about it. Oh, to this oh. day, they talk to people and say, oh, mom, when Junior would cough and start acting like he was going to get sick or something, she would give us that evil eye. I picture it, you know, Anne being like, okay, she's, he, yeah. my daughter's and on the altar. Yeah, they were she's teaching behave. Their kids. So, Yeah, they were teaching their kids discipline. was a strict one. Yeah. <laughs> Now, now I was strict with my boys, especially my kids weren't allowed outside. I mean, you know, because I was working. It's like you, you know, and my older son, he knew what he, they were allowed to do and what they weren't. As they got older, I let them go out and stuff. But, um, you know, I was very, even though I was lenient, I was still strict in certain things, important things I was strict on. Oh, yeah. Um, but. So then the child took, the, the priest took the child again and disrobed her. I don't like to hear that like that, but I know it doesn't mean, you know, it just was about. Well, whatever. they probably just left, of course, with petticoats and stuff. They just well, took off the clothing, main layers. Well, whatever clothing that she was wearing for this ceremony, there were several layers to, because it yeah. talked about how she got dressed. It's, yeah, there was a lot of layers. It's just, I don't like the way it's put here, you know. But yeah. this was written in the 18, what, the 1800s, is it? When was this written? Oh, I don't think it was written then. I think it was from then, but... No, 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 Jeanette. When did Anne Emmerich live again in the 1800s? I think so. I don't remember. Anne... I don't remember. Anne Emmerich. Anne Emmerich. Um... Let's see. She was born in 1774 and she died in 1824. Yeah. Okay. So then this last sentence, I saw them standing, drinking out of a cup and then departing. Like, that's just, you know, that's how her vision ends. So I thought that was an interesting vision. So now let's just take a quick look. The next one is the Holy Temple. And these, these pages are very tiny. It says 11 pages. And then the next one is, we might combine some, because some, the entrance into Jerusalem, right? That's number two. Wow, they're just at, like moving look, ahead. Look, and that, look at it real quick. And that's only six pages, the entrance to Jerusalem. That's number 10, right? Number 11, darn it, hold on. Number 11, it says, Mary's entrance into the temple and her offering, okay? And then her offering i wonder so what that I think, is i think at three years old she went back home and went there that's what i'm seeing now, i could be wrong i i don't want to read ahead but then after that Did she I, offer her chastity already at three and a half that's what i'm saying that's what i'm i'm saying yes she did that she did but did she stay there they said she was boarding but it sounds like she went home some so okay look a glance at the abdursary of the Pharisees. I don't even know what that means, but watch. So that was 10. Now look, that was only three pages, three tiny pages. And then John promised to Zachary. Okay. So I was That's like, John the Baptist. Yeah. And then the next chapter, look at the next chapter. After that is the most, the holy most holy incarnation. incarnation. Then Mary's a spouse to St. Joseph. So oh, wow. we only have this many to go. That's 13. We go to and it's going to start getting really interesting. <laughs> right. So 13, 12. And these are, some of them are really short. So these aren't long. So it'll only be a couple more days where we'll be getting into the, you know, into Mary and Joseph. So I thought that was really exciting that we were so close. Yeah, I'm just really, you know, I know that these were a little bit different and kind of hard to understand, but I'm it's just so glad nice. that I got that I got to know Mary's family. I am too. It was it was still fun. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Um yeah, so I thought this was uh oh wait, wait. I that's right. I wanted to look at this. Mary quickly replied she was ready even for this work. A three year old was she was esteemed worthy to perform it. At a speech, Joachim again betrayed his emotion. So you see how emotional he is? So Aww, I, I like Joachim. I do too. I love them all. He's 
He's cool. I'm feeling a sense of warmth around them, like we know them. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to do nothing with the citizens. Please, God, let me sit with the saints. Let us have dinner with the saints. Let us have a feast. They yes. Heaven, heaven. Uh, we still got time. We can. We can keep. Like, <laughs> like Jean says. She says, "When I wake up in the morning, my friend Jean." Yeah. She said, "When I wake up in the morning, I just pray that I can get closer to being a saint today." She wants to be a saint. That's all she wants out of That's life. To be a saint. That's what I want. And so she, any challenge, any challenge they time. give her. Anybody she can help, anything yes. that she's available to do, she'll do it. I know. She's, she's just, I don't understand. She, I, I mean, we still do a Bible study daily. She she's, does it in her car on the way to places, to church. She's places. older than me and she has more energy than, than I've amazing. ever had in my, in my, you know, 40. Like she has energy like I had in my 30s. You know what I Gina's mean? Gina's a mother Teresa of our group. Let me tell she you. She really is. <laughs> like oh yeah but anyway. yeah so okay, uh, well, it was very interesting guys yeah, and so next time we're reading nine know. and we only go up to 13 so until we okay. get into the incarnation but still okay. if you look at the so book next week, if you look at the book we're right there no Jeanette <laughs> we, look look I'm going to show you something we why is it my book looks like a lot bigger than yours Jeanette look we go we are on page 200 almost and we have 2000 so we are 10 percent, almost 10 percent. okay that's, that's a lot cool. that's a lot yeah we've only been doing this for like a month right and we skip I weekends don't remember we don't do <laughs> weekends and some days we miss some days we only did four days yeah yeah. Okay. Well, it was fun. And mm -hmm. I'm going to get back to cleaning and doing my chores. As you see, I got my apron on. Yes, you did. <laughs> this was an in-between, you know, we're doing what we're doing what Anne and the Asinians did where we stop in the middle of the day with our, with our daily chores to pray. Yep. This is yep. one form of praying guys. I'd like to, I'd like to get into. We should have done our prayers this morning and now this is an extra. Exactly. And we did. Mm -hmm. um, I did the 15 promises this I did, morning. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I did. I, I did, I've been doing the morning and then night because I'm like a hundred days. Cause, cause we doing? want, we want to be able to get a chance to confess. Uh, I, we I die. One year. If I, it, you do, te if you do it every day, it's, you take, uh, how many a hundred it was 10 years off of your purgatory so if i do it twice a day i'm taking 20 years off my purgatory for one year and oh, I'm you get you get time taken out of purgatory if you do them every day 100 day you didn't read the promises did you a hundred days for every time you do it wow That's well then crazy. guys guys you gotta share that link for them down oh, here one year yeah share it down I, here I, for I'm them sharing it i will reshare it but listen well, because we said it in person here because some people are like me and they don't really read when there's like tons of stuff to read but they listen like if i'm a listener i'm not a reader if you do it as you one can tell day, if you do the 15 <laughs> promises one day right you yeah. get a hundred days off your purgatory Wow! If you times that for one year, if you times that 365, I did the math. It comes out, you will take 10 years off of your purgatory if you do it for one year. Wow. Do it twice a day for one year and you'll take 20 years off of your purgatory. Okay. Do it every year. You're in five years, you've taken, what is that? 20. And you can pray it while you're doing dishes or while you're folding laundry or while no, you're doing you your chores. You no, can't? Cause you, no, because you have to read those prayers. They're different. Each I time. don't read them. I'm listening to them and I'm praying with them. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. You, I, I, I watch the, the YouTube. I watch the YouTube, but I read it while he's reading it. Sometimes if I'm going somewhere and I'm trying to do something, if I'm in the middle of cooking something or doing, you know, organizing something, then I just repeat what he says. But see, for me, that takes my focus because I'm doing something else. So I try to sit and it's very hard for me because I, I can't do that. I, ha I have to, if I'm going to 
you know, I can't. I have too work. much to do, hand This doing this, what I'm doing this, but 15 <laughs> minutes, you know. I make it okay. I'll try. I'll try. That's all I can do. Well, no, but if you, if you can do it, if you if it works for you, what you're doing, and you yeah, I I I do my rosary like that. I pray. I listen yeah, I'm while like I'm that. doing stuff. I have to like, otherwise I start thinking something else. So. Oh no, I listen to what I'm praying. Yeah. Like if I'm watering the plants, I water one plant at a time. I have tons of plants. I have thousands of plants Ugh. because I don't have a sprinkler system. So I got to do it by hand oh, and it takes a lot of time. Like, so I used to do an Our Father for the big trees and then a Hail Mary oh, for okay. the little oh, ones. And then a Hail Mary, another one, and then a Hail Mary. So I know how much to water each one. It's working for you. Yeah. yeah. Well, some people keep their hands and they do the birthday song. Well, you can wash your hands and do the Hail Mary or the Our Father. Hail Mary is probably too short. Yeah. And when you stop at a stoplight, at a stop sign, mm -hmm. you do a quick Hail Mary full of grace. The Lord is with you. And then you and start up again. When you're in the grocery store and you're annoyed that you have to wait in line, you could do a whole darn decade. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you can carry it on your ring the decade. Yeah. Or your fingers, you can count I, your Yeah, I just, I do this too, you know, so. All right, mama. I'll see you, we'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Have a blessed day, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.